Hi, I'm Giuseppe Re, a PhD student at Sapienza University of Rome, and today I'm going to present the work Twin Peaks, a model for recurring cascades, which is a joint work with Matteo Almanz and Alessandro Panconesi from Sapienza University of Rome and Silvio Lattanzi from Google Research Switzerland. The motivation behind our problem are information cascades. In general, a cascade is the spreading of contents, ideas, or products in complex system of interacting agents. They spread to a well-known phenomenon called the word of mouth, which uh, makes content viral. They are studied uh, in uh, disciplines beyond this conference. They are well studied in network science, data mining, even economics, uh, marketing, and history. For instance, uh, here is a book by the well-known historian Niall Ferguson, The Square and the Tower, in which he analyzes the role of information diffusion by word of mouth throughout history. Nowadays, thanks to the amount of data provided by social media platforms, we can perform quantitative analysis on those cascades. And uh, thanks to that, we uh, can uh, study them much better. Our point of departure uh, are recurring cascades, more precisely uh, the work Do Cascades Recur, presented by Cheng, Adamich, Kleinberg and Leskovec at this conference in 2016. Uh, in this work, they performed a year-long large-scale analysis of cascades of public content on Facebook. And they observed several interesting properties of those cascades. Uh, the main properties is recurrence. Uh, for instance, you can see uh, that uh, in uh, this meme uh, from their work, they study, study the number of reshares over time, and they noticed that uh, it uh, exhibited multiple bursts of popularity with periods of quiescence in between. For instance, you can see that this meme is, was very popular in March and then it becomes uh, popular again some months after that, without an apparent reason for this uh, to happen. They analyzed these uh, recurring cascades and they observed uh, some empirical properties. Uh, first, uh, quite counterintuitive property, uh, recurring cascades are associated to moderate virality. Moderate virality is what gives us the so-called twin peaks. Uh, while with high virality, we get a high peak that exhausts pretty quickly the population interested to the meme, while, and with low virality, we get a very uh, small cascade, so a small number of population uh, of people that are interested to the result and then uh, reshare it. Second, uh, they observed that uh, recurrent behavior can be triggered by just one meme originating from a single node in the, in the network. Then a small fraction of the users reshare the same content multiple times. And we can see that this seemingly unremarkable fact is key to understand the recurrence, according to our model. And finally, uh, bursts of popularity roughly corresponds to communities. So this phenomenon is strictly linked to uh, the community structure of social networks. So uh, we can summarize some notable properties for recurring cascades. First, uh, large cascades are rare, but not so rare. Large cascades have often multiple bumps. This was observed in 50% uh, of large cascades uh, analyzed by Cheng et al. Different bumps should span different communities. And finally, resharing should play an important role in triggering the recurring behavior. The others left an interesting open problem uh, to provide a mathematical model which provably exhibits the properties of recurring cascades. And this is what we do in our paper. We can see as here a simulation uh, of an information cascade in our model of random graph. And different colors are associated with uh, different times at which the nodes uh, get infected for the first time. And we can clearly see that our, in our model, uh, different communities are associated with different bursts in popularity. That is one of the main properties required for uh, recurring cascades. Uh, the proposed model, um, I'll talk about the proposed model. Uh, for our philosophy, the model should be very simple, but at the same time, it should capture the fundamental properties of recurring cascades. It has two main ingredients, the social network and the viral process. 
for the social network. We chose a simple version of the well-known stochastic block model uh, because it exploits the community structure of social networks. While for the viral process, we chose a variation of the SIR stochastic process, which allows reinfections. In this stochastic blue model uh, random graph, we have n nodes uh, partitioned into communities. Uh, then for each pair of vertices in the same community, we toss a coin that gives head with probability P, that is a parameter of the model, and we add the corresponding edge to the graph if uh, the outcome was actually an head. So we usually end up with tight uh, communities. Then for a pair of vertices belonging to different communities, we toss a different coin with a smaller probability Q uh, of giving head. And so we will be uh, less likely to have edges uh, between different communities and we will have less of them. As for the infection process, we chose a variation of the well-known SIR. Uh, the vertices go through the following states. At the beginning, they're all susceptible to the infection and they can become infected. After the first infection, they can become resistant, uh, but they can be reinfected for the second time. However, after the second infection, they become immune. So at each time, we have uh, mainly uh, two categories of vertices, except for the immune ones. We have the vulnerable vertices, uh, which can be infected, but they are not infected and the carriers, which are infected and try to spread the infection. The starting point of our process is a single infected node that tries to spread the infection to its neighbors. Then whenever a carrier tries to spread the infection to its neighbors, it clearly cannot spread it to other carriers or to an immune node. So it can only spread it to vulnerable nodes. And for each edge towards a vulnerable node, it tosses a coin that gives head with probability P0, which is a parameter of the model and expresses the virality. Whenever this uh, toss gives a success, then the infection successfully propagates uh, through the edge. This results in the susceptible vertices becoming infected, while the resistant vertices uh, toss uh, another coin that gives head with probability R. And only if uh, also this coin gives head, they become infected for the second time. So they're more resistant to being reinfected. I'll illustrate the uh, theoretical results. For Sol, we provided formal definitions for our model, for all the requirements, and especially for recurrence, which is expressed uh, through the presence of twin peaks. Uh, we say that we have twin peaks if we have two peaks that are high enough and that have a valley in between. The peaks are local maxima within a certain interval, and the number of resharings uh, or infected between them should drop below a certain threshold. And this is inspired by the uh, definition from the original work, uh, which was uh, numeric, well, ours is uh, for general uh, graphs. And we also provided a formal definition for all the properties of our model. For instance, requiring th that large cascades are rare but not so rare uh, is, can be stated through something like uh, XCAD should reach 1% of the nodes, meaning that it's large, uh, with small probability, let's say less than 0.1, but not so rare, so also with probability larger than 0.1. And the same thing is done for all the other properties. So you can find in the paper formal definitions for our requirements and the properties. The key idea behind the theoretical analysis is to separate somehow uh, the analysis of what happens within a single community and uh, between all the communities. So it to somehow treat ind independently inter-community and intra-community dynamics. What happens in a single community when the infection starts Everybody's infected quickly, and this gives a high peak. Moreover, a constant fraction of the nodes is infected twice. And we can see that this gives the extra strength uh, to the infection, uh, thanks to which uh, it can become large, it, so it can give a large cascade. More precisely, we define the inter-communities infection graph, in which communities are nodes, and two communities are linked by an edge, if and only if there is a successful infection uh, between them. 
So if we don't allow reinfection, uh, this graph has a small connected component, but if we allow reinfection with a certain rate, then a large giant component emerges containing a constant fraction of the nodes. And so if um, this is the actual outcome of the dynamic process, but we can study it as it is uh, a static random graph. So with constant probability, we end up starting in this giant component. And when we are there by well-known properties of random graph, there is sparsity. So the peak given by the first community is uh, separated from the peaks given by the other communities. And this gives us the twin peaks. We performed an experimental analysis. First, uh, we uh, selected uh, both stochastic block model random graphs and real world networks, and we simulated our viral process on it. These are, this is a summary of all the data sets used. We can see here the number of infected nodes over time uh, for a certain range of parameters uh, can give uh, gives uh, twin peaks, so recurrence. In orange, you see the number of second infection. So you can see that there are, there are very small number of second infections, but they're crucial to the onset of recurrence. And the same thing happens on real world social networks too. Here, I just showed you a couple of plots, but you can find more in the paper. Here is a plot on which we have on the x-axis P0, the virality, and on the y-axis R, which is the resistance to the second infection. The uh, probability there expresses that. So we can see that there are settings of high virality in which um, uh, we have all yellow that corresponds to the probability of having large cascades. So in uh, for large uh, virality, we always have large cascades. But for small virality, which corresponds to blue, we have always small cascades. But there is a setting of moderate virality in which we have a uh, large cascade and also recurrence, where here recurrence is represented through red stars. If we focus on the specific regime of moderate virality, uh, we can see the role, the role of reinfections. If R is equal to zero, so if we don't have reinfections, we also don't have large cascades. While is, if R is large enough, we can observe large cascades, which are also recurrent because we see the red stars. Finally, we studied influential nodes in the spread of the cascade, where uh, by influential, we mean that uh, a node, after preventing uh, its reinfection, uh, makes the cascade uh, small. So uh, we say that a node is influential if we can inhibit its reinfection, this has a huge impact on the cascade. And this is a reasonable definition because we have seen the reinfections play a crucial role in our model. There are two questions to this regard. First, do such nodes uh, exist? And then can we identify them? And the answer to both questions is likely yes. So uh, we consider the set of large recurrent cascades generated from the previous simulations. And then we tried to uh, identify influential nodes. So we tried different scores and we ranked the nodes according to those scores. And then for each scores, we picked the top K nodes and prevent them from reinfecting. And then we run the cascade, uh, but without the reinfections given uh, by those nodes. So the scores we use are some well-known scores like page rank, clustering coefficient, and degree. We also use the random score baseline, and we use the new score bridges, which uh, um, measures how much a node is a bridge between communities, so much it's able to spread the infection to other communities. And we can see here on two random graphs that uh, our heuristics, uh, especially for very low budget, is nearly always the best. But the main take-home message is that we can inhibit reinfection for a very small number of nodes, just 30 nodes in DIG, uh, which is a graph of 300,000 nodes. And this small number of reinfection inhibitions can destroy the majority of large cascades. Thank you.